today we are very pleased to present to you a special lecture under our professional sharing series, or PSS in short. The PSS is one of SEI's knowledge sharing platforms where we seek to promote a dynamic exchange of environmental information and knowledge amongst NEA staff and professionals from the public sector, the industry, businesses and academics. Since 2004, SEI is proud to have played host to more than 50 eminent academics, policy leaders and industry experts at our PSS. Our distinguished speaker for our PSS is Professor Kenneth Richards, Muslim Mass Visiting Professor of Sustainability at NUS Business School. He's a professor of environmental and energy policy at the Indiana University. Prof. Richards has held senior vis visiting fellow positions in top institutions such as Oxford University and has also served as an economist for the Council of Economic Advisors with the US government. Prof. Richards' research focuses on environmental policy decisions at the interfaces of business and government, science, technology and policy, and law and economics. Additionally, he has also published extensive research on government policy instruments, economics and law, as well as international climate policy to name but a few. Today, Prof. Richards will share his insights from his research on developing a framework of environmental policy instruments and will discuss how various forms of collaboration can support effective policy making. Without further ado, let's put our hands together to welcome Prof. Kevin Richards. Prof. Richards, please. Thanks, uh, thanks very much for, uh, for that introduction. I can only hope to uh, carry on that level of energy uh, created by the book launch. Uh, I, what I want to do today is to talk to you about some uh, research that my co-author, Stephanie Richards, and I uh, are working on for a book for uh, Cambridge University Press. What we're trying to do is develop a, a, a framework uh, that will increase our understanding of the policy instruments available for government in the pursuit of uh, protecting the environment. Um, looking for oh no. uh, good. So to do this, what we're going to do is is work very quickly through uh, four four areas: some quick background and uh, definitions, uh, a discussion of how policy instruments have generally been treated in the uh, in the literature, a bit more background and context for this discussion. And then uh, to introduce a taxonomy that we find helps organize our thinking about uh, the uh, policy instruments available to the government. To start, what I'd like to... That's not working. There we go. And... It's a bit ironic that as I'm talking about the tools of government, I can't find the tools of technology to work for me. <laughs> um, so the, uh, the first thing I want to do is, is a couple of quick definitions. What are, the, uh, uh, what are government policy tools? My favorite definition is very simple. They're the mechanisms that translate substantive policy goals into concrete actions. So when the government chooses a policy, an environmental policy to pursue, it still has to find a mechanism to, to take that from goal into, uh, into action. And so these are the things like uh, emissions, uh, emissions fees, uh, marketable allowances, command and control regulations, subsidies, and so on. These are the tools government uses for translating from, uh, from policy into, uh, into outcome. The second question is, what is a taxonomy? And a taxonomy is a scheme that uh, partitions a body of knowledge and defines the relationships among the pieces. It's used for classifying and understanding that body of knowledge. So if we develop a taxonomy for policy instruments, it should help us uh, uh, clarify, organize, and, um, uh, and gain insight for our understanding of the use of those policy instruments. What are some of the kinds of uh, insights we might want? Some, uh, some of the, the, the questions that we might try to address with this is, what is the range of the government policy instruments available? 
how do available uh, typologies describe that range, and how many categories of instruments are there for that matter, how can those policy instruments be conceptually organized to provide insight into their characteristics, and how do why, why is it that governments often use multiple policy instruments to address a single environmental problem? And how do voluntary instruments fit into that larger uh, set of policy instruments? What role is there for collaboration, which is an issue of particular interest to NEA? And uh, how can we evaluate policy instruments for insight into their appropriate use and their relative strengths and weaknesses? So what I want to do now is then to address those first three questions about how is, how is the literature uh, organized policy instruments in the past, and then start talking about some of the ways we evaluate policy instruments, some of the ways we, we can do better at organizing policy instruments, and then wrap up with a discussion of some of the collaborative uh, elements in this uh, uh, range of policy instruments. So let's start with the, the, uh, uh, what I refer to as policy instrument, instrument menus. If you go back through the uh, policy literature of the past three or four decades, you find a, a subset of papers that provide reviews of the range of policy instruments available. The, 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 the tone in these is very much uh, along the lines of, here's a set of policy instruments. Choose one. And by the way, some of them are better than others. It's a bit like ordering from a Singapore restaurant, where you might say, well, I'll have the uh, Heidi's chicken rice, or I'll have the um, uh, mee goreng, but just choose one. They're each one distinct. And so the, the, um, uh, what we did was to take a look at the uh, literature of microeconomics and policy analysis. And I can't show you all of these, but just very quickly to, to give you a sense of this, what I really want you to see is the very large number of policy instruments available. Uh, uh, this classic work from Bobel and Oates, take a look at two and three, direct controls, market processes. What is this? This is command and control versus market-based instruments. It's the way that economists have classically defined the policy instrument choice. But even, even this early work betrays the fact that there's actually a lot more instruments available than just command and control versus market-based instruments.